One of the questions that we get a lot is how do I know if my data is tidy? And in this video, I want to tell you to forget about tidy data. While this concept is super powerful and it also powers a lot of the tools that we like to use in the tidyverse, in practice, it is not much use to worry too much about whether your data is tidy or not. Instead, it is much more important to figure out what you want to do with your data and if the data is in the format that you need to get the job done. I'm not saying that the concept of tidy data is useless. In fact, it powers a lot of our tools, but still, in practice, you should rather worry about how to get your job done. And then if you end up turning your data into a format that is tidy at the end, it doesn't really matter if your data was tidy or not. What matters is that you got it into the format that you need to get the job done. And to make this more practical, let us have a look at an example. Inside of my quarter file, I have already put in three code chunks, two of which are hidden because they are not really important right now. But what's more important here is that we've already loaded tidyverse and we have loaded a data set. You see this data set here. Basically, it shows you the mean life expectancies. That's why it's called mean life X for different continents. And of course, it does this not for a single year, but for multiple ones. There are even more columns in here, but you get the gist from just seeing these couple of columns here. Okay, so this is how our data set looks and this one can be considered not tidy. But at the end of the day, does it really matter that this one here isn't tidy now? You see, it comes down to what we want to do with this next. If we want to throw this into a table, this might actually be a nice format. But if we wanted to do a plot like this that shows you the life expectancies over time, then this data set isn't really too great for this. What we need to do here to create such a plot is to map the column of some data set to the aesthetics of this plot here. So in this case, this would mean that we need to map exactly one column to the X aesthetic, exactly one column to the Y aesthetic, and exactly one column to the color aesthetic. But if we look at our data set, we can't really do that, can we? We see that all of the information that is supposed to be in one column, but it is really spread out over multiple columns. Similarly, if we want to use the life expectancies for the Y axis, we have to map one column with the life expectancy to this aesthetic. But once again, we have that information spread out over multiple columns here. All of it is inside of these rows here. Again, not in one column, but in multiple ones. And now this is the situation where you can start to think, okay, I need to rearrange my data somehow. I need to put this into a different format. And because ggplot uses this tidy mindset, it, we will end up turning this data set that we have here into a tidy format. But at this point, it doesn't really matter anymore. Really, we're just trying to get a job done. And that job is creating this plot here. So let's rather focus on that instead of worrying too much. Okay, is this data set good? Is it in a nice format? Whatever. Let's just take the data as we get it. In life, we can really choose the format in which we get the data. So let's just deal with what we have here and then make this into the format that we need to get our job done to use the tool that we want to use. So in this case, this means that we take our data set here and then we pass it to pivot longer to rearrange some of the columns and make the data set longer instead. So we target everything but the continent column because the continent column is already in a pretty good shape. You know that because you could pass this continent column to the color aesthetic and you would be fine. All of the information with respect to the continent is inside this one column. And now for pivot longer, we also need to map the names to some new column. Let's throw this into a new column that we call year. And we see that all of the things are actually prefixed with year underscore. So we tell pivot longer to remove that part by telling it that there are always these prefixes. And by default, pivot longer will just know that we do not want those. Now, if we execute this, we get something like this. But notice that this one here is formatted as a character column. We cannot use this in ggplot. We need to make this double. But thankfully, the pivot longer function can also transform the stuff from character to numeric for us. So let's use the name transform argument for this. And then we get a double vector here. So this means that it is numeric. And also we get a column that is called value. That's because all of the values that are inside of these rows here, they all by default get sorted to a column that is called value. So this is why we get this name here. If we want to make this more meaningful, we could use the values to argument and then this new column would also have this name. Here it really doesn't matter too much for this demo like this, but in a real world setting, I would always use this values to thing to make sure that I know what is inside of my column. 
So this here right now is in fact tidy data. It fulfills the formal definition of tidy data of I think every row has exactly one observation and whatnot. There are three bullet points. I would have to look them up to give you the exact wording. But at this point, does it really matter? I know that this one here is good for ggplot. So my practical definition of tidy data is simply this one here is good for ggplot, so it must be tidy. That's good enough for all of the use cases in practice, so let's just go with this one. You see, I'm really trying to stress here that it doesn't really matter too much. You don't have to worry too much whether the data that you have, this one here, is in a tidy format or not. What matters is that you can get the job done that you want, for example, plotting a plot. And this would mean that you need to rearrange data somehow, but you don't need to think about this label tidy so much. You can just accept that ggplot needs this format and then you bring it into this format. And to prove to you that we can actually use this data set in ggplot, let's just make a plot happen. We take this data and pass it to ggplot where we specify the aesthetic, which we can do now because all of the things we want to have on the axis and on the color aesthetic are inside of one column now. So on the x-axis, we use this year column. On the y-axis, we use this mean life expectancy column. And on the color aesthetic, we use the continent. And then we can simply pass this to GM line where we might modify the line width. And that way we get a plot that we can modify a little bit by also adding points in there. And then we can also change the theme. Let's make it into a minimal theme. Let's change the base size and the font family just to make it look nicer. And then as something that we should do on every chart, let us also modify the labels. On the x-axis, we don't need anything because these numbers here clearly represent the years. Everyone can kind of figure this out. Similarly, on the y-axis, we don't need anything because I'm going to put in all of this information into the title. On the color aesthetic, I'm using continent spelled with a capital C. And then, as I said in the title, I put in the mean life expectancies over time. And then it really is clear what these things on the axis are. So with that, we have completed our chart. I can show you the other code chunks now. This one here is just the code for the chart. We don't need that. But here I show you how I created the continent mean life expectancy column. I used data from the Gapminder package which has the Gapminder data set. And this one already shows you all of the data for different countries. You can summarize this. And once you have that, this one here is already in a tidy format. So I made this into a not tidy format with Pivot Wider, just as a demo for this video. Okay, with that, I hope that I was able to stress to you that you don't have to worry too much about the label tidy. You see, if you get a data set like this, don't worry too much if this is tidy or not. Focus rather on what you want to do with that. And once you have that as your goal, start working on that. And if this means rearranging your data set, then so be it. But you don't have to worry about the label tidy. You just start out working on rearranging the data. So that's how I encourage you to think about this label tidy data in the future. And of course, all of this doesn't mean that tidy data is useless or this concept of tidy data. It is nice to have this concept and all of these concepts power all of the great tools that we have like ggplot. But on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't have to worry about it. Or think of it like adding numbers. If you want to add 36 plus 24, you don't worry about, wait a second, are these numbers even addable? Can I add them together? Is this possible? I mean, theoretical mathematics tells you that we can always do that. We can always add together numbers. But does this really matter on a day-to-day -day basis? No, you just start adding together these numbers and then you have some result later on. It's the same thing with the concept of tidy data. It is really nice that there is this theoretical foundation of tidy data that also powers all of the things we use in the tidyverse. But on a day-to-day -day basis, we don't stop to worry, is this possible with this kind of data set? You just start going at it. So this was my last anecdote that I wanted to share about how to think about data. I hope that you found this helpful. Let us know in the comments if you found this valuable. We love hearing from you. And with that said, enjoy the rest of your day and see you next time.